Okay, we're going to talk about angular momentum. Uh, but before we start talking about angular momentum, we just have to make sure we're all on the same page. So, what is just regular momentum? Like, uh, think about when you're like three and playing with like uh, those math box cars and you want them to crash into each other and they ricochet off. Or if anybody's been a little bit older, plays pool, uh, something like that. Filler balls hit each other and reflect off of each other. Uh, so what? So what is momentum, right? We have an idea for it. It's like um, we know it has to do with collisions. We learned that in physics one. So momentum is just uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, mass times velocity, right? And so if we have a mass and we have a velocity, we have a momentum. So if you have something really small and doesn't have a lot of mass and it has a high velocity, it could have just as much momentum as something that's really big and a small mass. That's why, like. Um, took like a wrecking ball and shot it with a bullet, like who knows what would happen, and that'd be a really fast bullet. So anyways, so that's, what's that, that's just what regular moment, momentum is. And I think we all have sort of an idea of what regular momentum is, largely because we drive our cars, we play games, uh, we bowl, things like that. But something a little stranger and harder to get your head around is angular momentum. So what is angular momentum? Angular momentum is momentum, but in a circle, yeah. Woo, it's wild. Uh, so angular momentum is momentum, but it now relies on another piece. It relies on something called your arm, um, so your lever arm. So it depends on your mass, it depends on your velocity, but it also depends on something called the lever arm, and it's something called the bell. So normally you have a ball that's going straight, that's linear. But now you have a ball that's going around a curve. Your lever arm length is just whatever happens to be the radius right there, and we're going around. So if you have a string attached, it'd be just the length of the string. And this is just a way that we can take this and move it into polar coordinates and think about it that way. Okay, so a demonstration of angular momentum. Angular momentum has a lot of different pieces. We have orbital and we have orbital uh, angular and angular. So here's a demonstration of some cool things that you can do with with um, angular momentum. So like first let's see what the dependence on mass is. So somebody come up here and push me around in a circle. Just for fun. Are you feel safe? I feel very safe. Sure. Yeah. Okay. He has the tables to catch him. Okay, so that's good enough. Okay, so see how fast I'm going? Not that fast right now. Okay, so if somebody could, you know, if I instead am holding a mass and I'm going to spin again, He's pushing the same, but I'm moving faster with less. It's actually a lot scarier now. Okay, and if I can stop. So that, that shows you sort of like qualitatively the dependence on your mass to your length of momentum. So there, I added more mass, and I started to spin at a higher velocity. I didn't stretch out any, my circular, circular wasn't a figure, I didn't get fat all of a sudden, I didn't hold my hands out, so my L didn't change, so just my M. So you can see that a bigger M results in a bigger B when your L stays the same. So let's try something else. Let's see what happens when I change my L. So if I change my L, I'm going to back up on here. And Eduardo, I'm trusting you with my life. It doesn't matter. Okay, so here I'm spinning. That's good. And then Ooh. <laughs> I slow down. And then I'm faster. And then I slow down. So here, what's happening is my velocity, when it's close together, is really high. But I'm giving off, wasting my velocity when I move my arms out. So now my lever arm is taking the energy that would normally be associated with just straight kinetic energy. It's being stored out here. So angular momentum has a dependence on mass, it has a dependence on velocity, and dependence on L. I can show you the velocity, just like changing my velocity, but I'm not that brave. I don't want to fall and die. Uh, so why is this important? Why do we even care about this stuff? Like this seems like a really like niche. Well, has anybody rode a bicycle? So there's also, sorry, there's a conservation of regular momentum, right? So we know that MB, want, MB initial equals MB final for any system. That's why in a perfectly inelastic system, you have two balls hit each other, and you can guess, if you know what the velocity of something in the systems are, what everything else in the system is, right? So this is important because angular velocity continues this conservation. The, the mass is distributed along this here, which makes it a little bit more complicated system, but we won't go into that. And my velocity is this. So I start out like this. If 
I try to move it, it's very difficult. And that's because it's like trying to take momentum out of a moving car. It's almost no different, it's just now you have to deal with the radial elements. Further, there's a cool trick you can do that I'm not good at, where you hold it like this. And You're stays. good at, look at you. Well, it should be staying a little bit better. Um, <laughs> it's staying more or less in the same spot, um, not falling over sideways, not because it's trying to conserve the angular momentum that's within this wheel right here. So even more, why is this important? Like, okay, so we're, maybe we're Dutch and we like to ride our bicycles everywhere. Um, but also, it's really important that we care about something called the solar system. So the solar system is basically just a bunch of things rotating around the center of the sun. Now, how do things move around the sun? Does anybody know? Like, what shape do they take? Do we have a cloud of things moving around the sun? Do we have a straight line of ducks around the sun? Um, do we have a spiral, things going out? Or in a simple way, do we have things along a disk? So think back to like when you've seen a picture of the solar system. Why is it that the asteroid belt is on a disk? Why is it that Jupiter is on a disk? Why are they all in a line together? Why aren't they all over the place? Uh, and how do we know this? Well, that takes us to our next demonstration. This is the one where you have the duck. So here, I have a ball. This ball represents a planet. Um, and you can just rotate it. You have to do it a little bit faster. Long. Yeah, you know Troy it's... Long. Whoa. Okay, I'm not going to do it again. So if you notice what happens to the ball, is it starts to lift up. Um, you can go back. And this is even easier to do if you're not on a table like that. Kind of sort of. Um, so if you notice that the ball lifts up, and it goes from this position here, and it picks itself up here. You notice it is not here and it isn't down here. It's because the angular momentum of the entire disk when it's rotating wants to be kept along this sort of equatorial. Um, so whenever you look at the planets and you're like, well, why are they rotating along this way? <laughs> Sorry, I'm out of wind. Being rotated takes a lot out of you. Uh, it's because they're trying to conserve the angular momentum of the entire solar system. So this is really cool. We can take something really, really simple like two little cars you throw against each other add a length component, say that conservation has to stay. And then you can start to get things like, what shape should the whole universe take on? What, these large things, the entire planet, how does it move? But we know that's not just all. We also know that there's an orbital component and an angular component. So you have these planets, they're not just drifting around like a ball in a circle, they're also rotating. And every new solar system rotates a certain way, but I'm gonna just start like this. So, if I do this, you notice that I'm rotating this way, and my wheel is rotating like this. If I try to turn it upside down, I rotate the other direction. So there is a definite relationship between the rotation of my planet, this wheel, and the direction that moves around the solar system. Um, in the case of the solar system, we believe that they started to get a regular movement, and then they started to pick up more of an angular velocity associated with it. But if you look at solar systems, especially young ones, Oftentimes, all the planets are rotating around the sun, orbiting around the sun in the same direction, and they're orbiting along the same direction. And weird anomalies like Uranus, and I can't remember what other one rotates in the opposite direction, but you notice an outside force that disturbed this conservation of angular momentum at atom. <laughs> so just from this, we can learn a lot about our universe. We know that there have to be large collisions in our own solar system. We know that all solar systems should behave more or less like our solar system. So we know that we're not just special, which, I mean, from like a dreamist point of view, like, oh, maybe if we get interstellar flight, we'll know how those orbits work. But also, it's something really beautiful about where we live. 